Let's talk about making money. Path one, sell your labor to an individual or organization that can make better use of it than you can. To do this, you usually have to specialize and learn some kind of in-demand skill. This can be anything from accounting to professional basketball. Then you go to the labor market and you offer your skilled labor and time to the highest bidder. If successful, you sign a contract with the before mentioned individual or organization to supply your labor, usually 40 hours of it per week, week after week, indefinitely for a fixed compensation rate per unit hour of time. The pros. This is great for predictability and recurring revenues with minimal cost of revenues, usually just gas, car maintenance, lunches, stuff like that. The real cost of the revenues is time, usually 40 hours per week every single week. Here, the workday is split into thirds, eight hours for sleeping, eight hours for your contracted work, and eight hours of quote unquote free time. This free time is usually consumed by commuting, cooking, general chores, with only a fraction being true leisure time. Then of course, there is the glorious weekends where you can finally do what you want. It's a five for two trade, and usually you try to make up for all the experiences you forfeited by selling 40 hours of time in the previous five days. The cons. There's only 8,760 hours per year. For 2,920 hours, you will be unconscious and sleeping. 2,024 hours of your time will be sold to somebody else leaving just 3,816 hours per year that belongs to you. This is time you can spend living a life, going on the trip you always wanted to do, go to the gym, pick up a new hobby, or just relax and watch your favorite Netflix shows. Except not really. Out of that 3,816 hours of free time per year, you spend 293 hours driving and an additional 62 hours per year sitting in traffic. 225 hours is spent preparing and serving food, 1,200 hours on your phone, 288 hours on chores, and 182 hours per year is spent using the bathroom. 20% of your life is spent in school, 30% is spent working, and 30% is spent sleeping. That leaves 20% in old age, and these are those golden retirement years. And unfortunately, they're usually not spent backpacking across Europe, having fun with friends. These years are usually spent in a declining state of health, living off of social security, with most people you know and call friends having died. This is probably what you think of when you think of retirement. You know, doing all the things that you've wanted to do your entire life, and now you're retired and you can finally oh, just take that vacation. And this is what we're all fed. We gotta do our 40 years at X company, and then finally we can have our time to retire. And this is one of those near and dear issues to me that pisses me off. This is what retirement actually looks like. This is what retirement looks like. This is what retirement actually looks like for people. It's just something that we've been fed to put our life on hold, to put the things that we want to do in our life on hold, to put our goals and ambitions, our happiness on hold until we finally retire. When I think about what my grandparents have done with their life, it sounds so mean to say, but like I think of it as an example of what not to do. My grandpa, he worked for Lockheed for like 40, two years, 43 years, got his retirement and his pension, went on a couple cruises, and then died. Lived in the same house, didn't travel, didn't do anything crazy or outlandish. I'm not saying that you should do crazy or outlandish things, but like, I just think he put 42 years of his adult life into something so that he could have 15 years of he didn't do anything, I don't. Path two, own a job. You can do what about 10% of the population does and start a small business. A bed and breakfast, a mechanic shop, a window cleaning service, etc. This situation has more similarities with path one than most people realize. You are still performing a job, often being paid by clients, by unit hour of time, with the majority of small business owners working more than 50 hours per week, leaving even less of your limited time for living life. 
The key advantage is that you work for yourself instead of selling your labor to the highest bidder on an ongoing contractual agreement. This has the disadvantage of putting all the burden of performance on your shoulders, along with the benefit of having ownership over one's production and labor. Path three, separating income from time. Some people realize that money isn't a rare thing. In the US, the Bureau of Engraving and Printing produces approximately $541 million each day. This process makes money you work for less and less valuable over time in a process known as inflation. Time, on the other hand, is finite. You are born with a fixed number of grains in your hourglass of life. There is no stopping the flow, and it will, at some point unknown to you, run out. That means you are trading a finite, non-renewable resource in exchange for something that governments make up and is being devalued every passing day. Path 3 offers a solution. Detach your most precious resource, your time, from your ability to earn an income. To put it simply, stop selling your time for money. Employers already do this. They leverage your time and your skills to create value in the market that is translated to money. The employer then pays the worker a percentage of the value they created, leaving profit for the shareholders. This process is perfectly fair with all parties benefiting and willingly participating. We just want to be on the shareholder side of the equation and not the worker, because the worker's income is tied to their time worked, and the shareholder's income is tied to the value created. So the formula is quite simple. Find a need in the market and satisfy it by solving a problem or improving on an existing solution, creating value in the process that is then translated to income. Passive income, i.e. money you don't actively trade your time for, usually requires an initial upfront investment of time to create an asset that can generate income, like writing a book. Once completed, you can sell one copy or a million copies with very low to no marginal cost of replication, especially if leveraging digital platforms. You could be traveling around Europe enjoying your life while your asset, the book you created, is generating income independent of your time after the initial investment. As a worker, you are the revenue generating asset. Employers then buy this asset to generate income for themselves. In path three, you create an asset that works hard to generate you income. That the rich do not work for money, they work for assets. And I think that that's spot on. If you look at examples of wealthy people and what they work for, Mark Zuckerberg's salary is $1. That's how much his salary is. Is he working for money? No, he's not working for money. Jeff Bezos' salary, get this, his salary is $81,840. That's his salary. $81,000, but he's worth currently $205.6 billion. So do you think Jeff Bezos was working for money or was he working for assets? Rich people do not work for money. They work for assets. Look at examples of any wealthy person. All of them have assets. They have ownership. They have equity. That's how people gain wealth in today's world. And it's been that way for a very long time. Nothing in life worth having comes easy. That's why path three is the hardest and most elusive, leaving many people to revert back to path one. And path one isn't a bad life. It's very stable, predictable income, and you get two free days a week to do whatever you want with. And for most people, that's satisfactory. But for those that want more and aren't satisfied with average, delinking your time from money is one of the greatest achievements an individual can strive for. And once achieved, your life will never be the same again. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. It's a little bit different than what I usually do, but I want to explain why we save money and invest and try to get passive income. Because it's not something we do for fun on the side. It's a primary goal because it has life-changing benefits. If you're still watching and enjoyed, leave the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.